re-examined the concept of the line of gravity just to add some clarity to my own practice. And so there are three main questions that I had about it, which is, um, what is it? What is its value in drawing? And how do we make use of its value in our drawing? What is gravity? What is line? And I went through it like that. The first thing is that, uh, you know, gravity is a force by which a planet or other body draws objects towards its center. And then line, I don't think there's any question about like what a line is. There's a, you know, you stand in line at the store, people line up to, uh, to do many things. There's a, um, but then line is like a series of, uh, even like small dots would appear to be a continuous line. In drawing, line really does represent movement of a thing. I'll discuss line in more detail in a future video. I made an attempt to define the term line of gravity. So it's basically line of gravity is this vertical relationship between the vestibular apparatus and its opposing form. Another word for balance is uh, equilibrium, which Oxford defines as a state in, in which opposing forms are balanced. Opposition in all things we're familiar with. You know, we have light and we have dark and we have kindness and we have malice. We have orange and blue and smooth versus rough. But we're talking about drawing the human form. What is equilibrium in the body? What causes us to have, be balanced? You know, where's our equilibrium in the human body? Apparently, the system responsible for our equilibrium is called the vestibular apparatus. Where's the vestibular apparatus? You know, basically inside the ear and it's useful for the, the side poses if you're drawing a side pose but to make it useful for every pose we can just consider it as in the center of our cranium so if we take that definition balance and equilibrium as a state in which opposing forms are balanced then all we got to do is know what the opposing form is to equilibrium and look on the opposite side of the body we have the feet because the equilibrium is physically within the cranium, then we consider the opposing form the feet, because the feet are on the other side of the body. If you want your drawings to feel balanced, then you will need to continually assess and reassess the opposing forms within the composition. That's not just in figure drawing, you know, if you want to have a balanced composition in like a perspectival drawing, you'll want to consider the elements within the drawing, particularly the opposing forms because the arrangement of the opposing forms is what will determine the balance. Basically that means that we need to know the relationship of our head to our feet and we need to place them in, this, in the uh, correct spatial relation to each other. And if we do that, then we'll have a balanced drawing, one that um, will have a sense of stability when we look at it, or um, not just in figure drawing, but in composition again, you know, it'll have a, a feeling of balance. I thought it was interesting that another description of uh, equilibrium was a healthy state of mind. So then my next question would be, how do we apply equilibrium? Like what do we do to create a healthy mind, a balanced mind? You know, when, we have, when we're talking about physical forms, we know we can clearly see them, you know, the head to the feet. In chemistry, when the process and its reverse occur at equal rates, that's equilibrium, that's balanced, you know. But in emotionally and psychologically, those are a little bit harder to pin down. Psychologists have defined all of these elements of the emotion and psyche. We can think about like happiness and sadness. What things make us happy? 
and that make us feel happy and what things make us feel sad. My issue with the whole discussion, and like, it's nonsense because as soon as we get rid of unhappiness, then we get rid of happiness. Like, we have to have that balance. We need to figure out how to transition back and forth and be grateful for the hard times that we have and for the good times that we have. Happiness is just a byproduct of life. You know, that's just one aspect of being alive. Sometimes we'll be happy, sometimes we'll be sad, and we need to experience both so that we have understanding, so that we can empathize with each other. If we can't empathize with each other, then what, you know, how can we work together? Our evolution is so dependent on us working together that it's vital that we learn how to manage our emotions and be okay with being sad and be okay with being happy. Anyways, if you have any comments, I'd love to hear uh, you guys' insight and inputs. I'm on a journey trying to figure some things out. If you feel like joining me, then I'm happy to uh, build the community. I just want to